Is there opportunity in the wake of last week's announcements from Fed Chair Jerome Powell, or are investments going to crash and burn? Let's start the countdown and find out. Welcome back to the Investor Place Launchpad, where we take a look at trending investment ideas and try to rocket them to the moon. I'm head of Mission Control, Aaron Davis, and this week we're looking at the fallout, for better or worse, that came from last Wednesday's update from Fed Chair Jerome Powell. As always, before we dive in, we'd love to continue to grow our channel here at Investor Place, so feel free to hit that like and subscribe button and smash that notification bell to stay up to date with us here at the Launchpad. With all of that out of the way, let's see what the market holds in store on the horizon as a result of last week's announcement. Announcements. While last week's update from the Fed caused a surge of reactions across the market, investors were seemingly disappointed by Powell's briefing. As a result, the S&P 500 that was up 2% prior to Powell's press conference dropped to a negative territory by the end of the day. To many, this seems like a natural reaction, with hinted raised interest rates that could start as soon as March, as well as a likely commitment to reduce its balance sheet holding sooner and faster than previous runoff. As a result, the market unsurprisingly suffered. As senior investment analyst Luke Lango puts it, the Fed was supposed to save the market, not kill it. Well, if you're a fan of forward thinking like Luke, then the path for investors lies in, believe it or not, being bullish. To sum it up, Luke suggests that the data-driven Fed is indeed reacting within the data being presented, with a slowing economy, supply chain pressure, and inflation strains being in their infancy, and most likely persisting into February, March, and April. However, Lango also envisions that this could all change by early to mid-spring, changing the data, thus new Fed policies again when they meet in May. Patience seems to be the key word in these volatile times, with it being a great time to hold onto stocks that one has high convictions in, as the potential for the market to rebound before the Fed's meetings this spring. Alternatively, Loop posits that growth stocks, which were hit hardest in the market sell-off, will be the biggest winners in the market rebound. Not all are as bullish as Luke, with Bloomberg.com reporting how Goldman Sachs strategist David Costin sees a downside risk to U.S. stocks, quote, adding to a chorus of Wall Street voices becoming more pessimistic. According to Bloomberg, Costin's take was also complemented by Morgan Stanley analyst Michael Wilson, who doubled down on a prediction for a further pullback. With Wilson predicting the lowest year-end target for the S&P 500 out of 20 few strategists surveyed by Bloomberg, Wilson predicts a 10% downside from the current level and a slowdown of earnings growth. While Kosin's target sits somewhere in the middle of strategists surveyed, a target of 5,100, both agree that the best strategy for today's market? Focus on quality. As Costin writes, we recommend investors focus on quality stocks and the potential upside that oil prices should drive for energy stocks. Finally, Investor Place contributor Muslim Farouk looks at the seven best cheap stocks to buy for February. Farouk examines value stocks that could potentially trounce growth stocks as inflation rates continue to rise. With the Fed indicating rate hikes throughout 2022, it's likely to reduce the faster growing enterprises' share values, which could generate the majority of profits in the coming years. To see Farouk's full breakdown, head on over to InvestorPlace.com, but Farouk asks investors to consider the following. Banco Santander Brasil SA, Lloyds Banking Group, Energy Transfer LP, Ambev, Petrolreo Brasilio, Banco Bilbao Vizcaya Argentina, and finally Telefonica SA. While the majority of these picks are split between financial institutions and utilities, Ambev stands out as the outlier of these picks. A Brazilian beverage specialist with strong international presence and a 26% growth year-over-year -year basis and a diluted EPS that has grown 80% in the past 12 months. The company continues to see growth in all of its segments and enduring its third quarter net revenues shot up to $18.5 billion, up 20.8% from the previous year. With a look ahead, Ambev is set to grow to approximately $125 billion by 2025. This last week certainly has been a whirlwind of reactions to the Fed's announcements, but like all things, time will tell if these are overreactions or well within the scope of the situation. But what do you think? Is it time to be bullish or bearish? Will there be a course correction by early spring? Growth stocks or value stocks? We'd love to hear your thoughts on the comments section below. Well, that's all we have from the Launchpad this week. If you'd like more insights like this and more details on some of Farouk's picks, head on over to InvestorPlace.com, where we release articles daily. And as always, check back with us here at the Launchpad, where we will continue to look for trends like the reactions to the Fed announcement. And as always, try to shoot for the moon.